There are many reasons why people aren't using their watercolor pencils and the major one is a huge mistake beginners make. I've made it, my local students have made it too, and I'm making this video so you can avoid this mistake. First step in that is awareness, because here's the problem with watercolor pencils. I'm going to explain why I'll start painting and show you what this mistake could look like in this art piece. So whether they come from the world of colored pencils or the world of watercolors or any other place, I noticed people are often surprised and confused about watercolor pencils and how to really use them. And that's because watercolor pencils are a medium all of their own, which means the techniques are also very specific to them. You can't completely transfer all you know from the other dry and wet mediums. Instead, you have to learn how watercolor pencils work and actually practice. So they're not hard to use, but they're not as easy as they seem when you first start. There is one major mistake in particular most of us are doing in the beginning that will absolutely ruin a painting, and you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about and how this can get from bad to worse very quickly in a full painting. First, you need to plan where you place colors very carefully with watercolor pencils and be very color mixing aware. If you're into watercolors, you know it's easy to create unwanted color mixes in a sky like this one because of the water. For example, if blue and yellow start mingling together, we'll get green, and most times we don't really want that in something like a sky, and the water will make it hard to stop or fix this color to happen. With watercolor pencils, there's a lot more control and time to fix mistakes, but the problem is similar because of the water factor. That's why I know here, for instance, to either wash my paintbrush or use two of them, one for blue, one for yellow, so both colors have less chance to meet. The nuance with the watercolor pencils that make them so confusing is that this type of mistake can get amplified really easily compared to watercolors or any dry medium. And it can happen whether you work on wet like I did for this guy or on dry or details like I'll show you next. So let me show you what this looks like in a more obvious way. The problem occurs when we start working with either colors that mix into a new color that we don't want, like the blue and yellow example on the sky, or it can happen when we start incorporating darker colors next to light or bright ones. I've done that the first time I used watercolor pencils and I've seen my students do the same, so tell me in the comments if you feel seen here. Because isn't it tempting to just brush the paintbrush over the coloring and get done with it? Because isn't that what watercolor pencils are for in the first place? Color, then activate. It works well on monochrome sections or those areas where colors are close enough on the color wheel that they mix into something pretty, just like these mountains back there, where I've used mostly blue and green, or all those dark areas in the grass where I've used the same colors in various proportions. And yet, even with colors that work well together, we can easily forget about a very small detail when we activate the paint. There will be a lot of pigment on a paintbrush after activating the pigment. With dry mediums, this isn't really as much of an issue since we'll work on sections more. And with watercolor, we'll work in layers a lot more while with watercolor pencils, it's a little bit of both and we'll still have the water to handle. That's what makes it tricky to foresee this mistake when you're a beginner. If we just keep painting with it, what happens is we just transfer that color onto the new spot we're working on, and as much as this isn't a problem in some cases, like here because it's mostly blue and green I'm blending, later on, when we add more colors, we might end up with a muddy mess of all colors mixed up together. And it makes me think of Kids Play-Doh where colors always look great in the beginning and after use usually all you get is a bunch of brownish Play-Doh. My kids do that all the time as you can probably tell. That's why even though watercolor pencils look like colored pencils, I still use the layering approach from light to dark colors, like we do it in watercolor painting, to keep the darkest colors from spoiling my painting. It doesn't mean not to be careful with the first layer and just blend everything in one go. And that's why, like colored pencils, I work on sections and when I activate each section of the watercolor pencil, I always rinse my paintbrush quite frequently, especially when the color or the tone changes enough that I might spoil the desired effect. 
this is how I'm able to get a nice look on this unfinished landscape with dark greenish areas and much lighter ones that I managed to preserve because I kept rinsing the paintbrush. I shared earlier how watercolor pencils amplifies that problem of creating muddiness or color mixes you don't want in a painting and this is going to get even more visible later in the process when you start going darker with shadow colors. The painting looks a bit boring and unfinished right now, at least to my taste, and it does need shadows. To get them, usually I'll use colors like blue, brown, or black. I could even use a darker green here. In every case, these colors can ruin a painting really quickly, the worst one being black if not handled carefully. Where it shows best here are in the lighter rocks. I need a grayish tone on there to make them look like rocks, but at the same time, I know I need those lighter parts on them too, so they look more 3D and not just a dark mass of color. It's all the more tricky because the greenish hills are dark near it, so we want it to stand out. In this case, you really want to keep a light hand on shadows, especially with black. With watercolor pencils in particular, I'll overlap a second color onto black to keep a strong shadow, but to make it a bit easier to blend into the rest of the painting, like I'm doing here by adding green. It will help tie these rocks to the rest of the painting, since I've used this pine green color elsewhere. Then, when the time comes to activate the paint, remember we still want to always clean the paintbrush to get rid of that pigment on it that we just blended, and not use a ton of water either so we can keep control. Imagine if I were to blend this by just brushing the paintbrush over the top, as if I was just painting the whole section without a plan, it would turn into a dark green mass of rocks while here it's not perfect at all. I'm sure I could do better on a rock study, but I managed to keep some light parts showing by just not using a ton of water and rinsing the brush often. And again, I work on sections when I do this to keep all colors contained to where I first placed them. In the grass, I also want to keep lighter areas, so I use the same strategy, and you can see it comes out pretty well, even though grass is difficult to render, I find. At this point, when you're happy with the contrast and overall looks of this painting, nothing needs to stop you from adding more dark touches or even a light ones and in the step. The mistake would be to feel like we need to blend everything all the time because it's watercolor pencil. Doing this will spoil some of the details, it's visible here with the grass. I add water to some parts, but if I overdo it, it will reactivate the layers below a bit and end up looking like a big mess, and we want to see all the small tufts I drew. So ideally, the more I progress within the painting, the more details, the least water I add or no water at all. A cool technique that will allow you to add the strong touches of those dark and light colors in a very obvious kind of way without meddling with all the previous work is to wet the lead of the pencil and add that to localized areas of the painting. I love that the white flowers show really well on top of grass with this technique. Watercolor pencils make it easy to do that. And I can even add small touches of the yellow color on top of the flowers a little bit of a brighter green to show on top of the darker greens, and voila! You really need to just learn and practice this, and you can have fun with watercolor pencils and paint anything. Let me know how this video has helped in the comments. I have plenty more on watercolor pencils in this playlist that you can watch next. Thanks for watching, and see you next time!